I love the car. I just find the car, for me, is a safe place. I was the baby that like would be screaming, and if my parents would put me in the car, I'd go to sleep immediately. I get a lot of inspiration in the car. I like being able to feel like the sub and the bass in the car. I like testing it out that way. And the car test has kind of been this place I can kind of silence everything out and just like focus on the songs and drive and clear my mind. I basically solely mix my album off of car tests. When I turned 20, I was overcome with the thought that I might not turn 21. Death upon my doorstep, if I took just one more step. There'd be nothing left of me except these songs And my father told me no And you don't know where you're going Just stand still Soon enough you will And when all the hope and joy you feel Turns into paranoia Cause it will Remember just stand still <laughs> I started music at a young age, so I feel like a lot of my journey has been finding my voice um, and trying out a lot of different sounds. Not yet. <laughs> you have to do both. <laughs> you got the acoustics. On the I've always been an extremely honest writer, oh, there, but sonically, I think I've just been finding myself, and really finding myself was just going back to who I really am. My inner child, I feel like there's a lot of getting comfortable with her again. This album has been a huge outlet for nurturing that part of me as well. I mean, Noah's extraordinary because she is so full of honesty, and from the first time I heard her lyrics, and it's quite inspiring, actually, to see someone who's, who's so open like that. Every record you make is such an intense experience where you come together and you're working on something that's so important because you're dealing with people's hopes and dreams, and that would be my, my ethos, really, is to try and distill what the artist is about. So you got a little bit of, like, darkness in there with the... Uh, I got a little bit of extra sort of angst, which again just informs the lyrics. The lyrics and how dark that lyric was. This album in particular, I touch on a few different relationships in all different ways. My relationship with addiction and drug abuse. I talk about my relationship with my family, my father and my home and going back and getting in touch with myself. And I, I feel like it's the first time in a long time or maybe ever that I've ever been able to look back at something I've done and been like extremely proud of it and myself. Crushed. You'll be right, you'll be wrong, you'll be fine, cause life goes on. Both Stand Still and The Hardest Part are extremely personal songs to Noah. Stand Still being, you know, a phrase that her dad used to say to her whenever she was a, she was a kid. And, um, you know, we really tried to create an environment for that emotion to live in. With Noah as well, it was actually creating the space for her to get her hands on the record, you know, to play on the record, to be involved. His studio and Mike's, Mike as a person is such a safe place. Mike's really the first producer that really wanted me to be involved. Mike taught me sub bass, so I'm playing a lot of the sub on the record and the tambourine and like piano and diving in on arrangements and the dynamics between the, that really sparked so much joy in me and happiness. I like fell in love with music all over again. Try mine.
good. Such an unusual track, this one. Yeah, I mean the timing of it and everything is, you should hear my cues in my ears. It's like one, two, some counts, some counts are up yeah. to six, some counts are up to eight. Because it's not in four, four, it has yeah. all these weird bars of different yeah. uh, time signatures. With the hardest part, I'm singing about things that make my inner child extremely happy, but as an adult, it makes me extremely sad in a way, and learning that this version of life that you live as a child, seeing it all grow and change, moving into adulthood and navigating that is also extremely hard. The song started out quite normal. Yeah, I remember. I guess that was, we brought, we brought some of that back at the end, wasn't it? With the guitar. With the guitar. That original. Things that make the hardest part and stand still such special records to me is how quickly they take me home. As we were kind of discussing furthering the production with that record, I went back into my videos and I had a number of videos from the last trip, like water running in the creek or um, there was a hawk circling recordings of her dad's ranch and eagles in the background and you can really feel like you're there. Um, so I think both those songs were more than just the musical parts but creating the texture and the, the ambience. Oh wow. It's like all these different textures of songs hidden within this one song. <laughs> This album has been an amazing tool to process everything I was going through. I mean, to write it out was very hard, but also really healing. I think it does end on this more open-ending, hopeful place, and that's really where I'm at right now. But I mean, the most healing bit of it all was working with Mike. I'm not just saying that because he's in the next room or here today. I genuinely mean that working with him, I think just woke something up inside me, some passion and drive for myself and for music that I hadn't had in such a long time. Um, and I feel like I really found myself. We don't get too long, that's why I'm holding on. And the hardest part of going home is facing that you're getting on. The rim. still has been stood. <laughs> uh, how do you feel? I feel. How like is my driving? Your driving was good. I feel Should like I do a little loop de loop? You didn't really, you didn't really get any donuts. To let, let it open too much. I still best. got time to probably move it into best. sport mode. <laughs> oh my God. Mike? Mike's like, God, no, please. I have kids at home. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, we should give him one of. <laughs> Good job, Mike. Good job, Tom.